Okay, uh, what else can I do? Oh, before I move on, I should talk about unit of magnetic field. How many, because I never really talked about that yet. Um, so how many here know the units of magnetic field? There's two common units that are in use. Um, how many here have dealt anything with the magnetic field? No one here, okay. Um, but some things you might know. Uh, so let me write down first. Unit of magnetic field. Um, um, well, what are some of the common uh, magnetic phenomena that everyone around the world can refer to? There's got to be something. Okay, that's uh, so why does aurora borealis happen at all? Because you wouldn't see aurora borealis on Mars or Venus or Moon. It happens only on Earth. Of all the planets in the solar system, it happens only on Earth and maybe Jupiter. But why? Well, but Jupiter is a gas giant. It's not a, okay, of all the terrestrial planets, it happens only on Earth. <laughs> so why does it happen on Earth and none of the other rock planets? No. Uh, waves coming from the sun. There, there's the geomagnetic field. There's magnetic field due to the Earth. That is something that everyone can refer to. So that would be a convenient um, magnetic field to refer to. And um, this is the unit that's uh, uh, convenient for referring to how much magnetic field does the Earth have. That um, this is like the customary unit. So we call that uh, Gauss. Gauss is one of the convenient unit of magnetic field, named after the same guy that Gauss's law is named after. He was, you know, he did a lot of stuff. Um, so Gauss is defined in such a way that the Earth magnetic field, uh, magnetic field due to Earth, it depends on where you are on the Earth. The strength varies a little bit. It's, you know, dipole field pattern, and it depends on where you are. But it's going to be approximately 0 0.5 Gauss. So you know, this is a um, um, respectable amount of magnetic field. It's uh, respectable, it's large enough that it affects this compass, right? So I'm not talking about some microscopic amount of magnetic field. It's enough that, um, wait, did my compass demagnetize all again? Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. Um, it's gonna point to north. <laughs> okay, so it's a large enough magnetic field that it'll affect compasses. Um, all right, the downside of Gauss, so you know, if you work with any kind of magnetic field, you'll see Gauss a lot. It's a very convenient unit. I, when I used to, my research used to involve magnetic fields, this is the unit we used all the time. But um, this is not an SI unit. As in, the promise in SI unit is that when you stick to SI unit, you will get really simple quantity. For example, you have this expression here, right? The promise of SI unit is that if you use ampere and meter and on SI unit here, then promise is that when you multiply this out, you are going to get Newton. That's the whole reason we have SI unit. And if we use the Gauss here, um, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't give you a, a Newton. It will, in fact, it'll give you um, a 0 0.1 millinewton. So, so Gauss is not an SI unit. It, uh, it's a based on an SI unit, but the actual SI unit of magnetic field, um, it's some other one, that name that you probably have heard before, Tesla. So Tesla is the SI unit of magnetic field. And um, the way to get a sense about Tesla is that it's related to Gauss this way. One Tesla is 10 to the four Gauss. Does Tesla sound like a small or large magnetic field? Large, yeah. And um, do you guys know how to generate huge magnetic field artificially? Well, yeah, so something like electromagnet, uh, like the place that uses really large magnetic fields are like a, a CERN, uh, the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, anybody here know how those electromagnets are made? They use something called the superconductors. To, um, to make, 
yeah, to make as much current to flow as possible because you know, looking at expression like this, the more current you have, the more magnetic field you can have. And I keep forgetting, I think the largest magnetic field that we can produce is something like 40 Tesla. Is that right? It might be 15. I don't know, it's definitely less than 100 Tesla. Um, so Tesla is a, such a large unit of magnetic field that if somebody ever tells you about they have a 100 Tesla magnet, you know they are lying because there are no materials with the properties that can produce that large of a magnetic field. So um, these are the units of uh, magnetic field. Uh, let me just wrap it up with this one last thing. Um, so if a Tesla is an SI unit, so I'm saying that um, if I plug in Tesla here, that all the units will work out so that, um, so that I get a unit of Newton here. So this is not one of the basic SI units. It must be related to the basic, uh, unit, basic SI units somehow. So how is it related? Or how would you get at it? I mean, you could always look it up. You could say, all right, what is one Tesla? And Wolfram Alpha will able to be able to tell you. That's one of the nice things about Wolfram Alpha. It's unit aware, and whenever you give it a physical quantity, um, it, uh, it actually it expresses it in many different ways. So, you know, 10 kilogauss, that's uh, what I was saying earlier. This is how I memorize, you know, get a sense for Tesla, but um, if you keep Going down, uh, okay, here it is. Basic unit dimensions. It says mass per time squared per current. Oops, what did I do? Um, mass per time squared per current. So kilogram per second squared per ampere. So if you have access to from alpha, that's all great. You would just look it up. How would you figure this out? What did I tell you about remembering units in the electromagnetism? I told you it's complicated that I don't try to, when we are doing circuits with a volt ampere ohm, that's when I was telling you there's, you know, sort of web, interlocking web of relationships. I don't really try to memorize any particular unit in terms of other things. Um, it's uh, something that you're just gonna end up forgetting. But there is something that I do try to remember. Well, I guess two things that I try to memorize. Let me tell you the first thing I memorize. I memorize all my formulas. So, you know, everything I write down here, I can write it down from memory. How would this help me figure out units? So once I have this formula where I know all the units, then whatever Tesla is, it must be defined in a way that the algebraic relationship here is valid. That's the whole principle behind dimensional analysis. So once I have remembered the formula that relates the quantity I want in terms of other quantities that I already know the units of, then I can go back. I can use this formula to figure out what Tesla is in terms of these other things. So let's just quickly do that. It won't take uh, that much effort. So it'll be, okay, force Newton um, is equal to um, ampere times meter times Tesla. Um, by the way, when I do these notations, I have to tell you, I do it slightly non-standard. The standard way is actually to write these out using symbol M for mass, T for time, and current, I guess I for current. But um, I found that to be confusing to a lot of people. So I'm just gonna use symbols for SI units because the assumption in this class is you're not gonna go away from SI units. So solve it is for T, Tesla, then you get Tesla, or rather one Tesla is equal to one Newton per um, ampere times meter. Hey, that's not what I have there. Ah, but I can write out what a Newton is. Hopefully you have this memorized. Newton is equal to kilogram times meter per second squared. Now, if you don't have this memorized, how would you get at that? 
what would you try to remember to recall that this is the relationship for Newton? Yeah, Newton's second law. Force is equal, net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So this is force is equal to mass times acceleration. So the technique I'm telling you, you could have used it from physics 4A. It's just that only with the electricity and magnetism, unit relationships become complicated enough that if you are trying to memorize this, you all forget it. But if you memorize this, you will always be able to redrive this. So anyways, putting this in, so it's a kilogram, meters cancel out, so I end up with one kilogram per second squared times ampere. And that's what you have there on the board. And um, I can do one more check. I guess it's a sort of unnecessary, um, but maybe it's useful. So this mu naught, I have it expressed. Uh, I have it expressed in terms of Newton per ampere squared. But uh, this kind of obscures the fact just how important this permeability constant is in expressing magnetic field. Right? So let's say I want you to express this mu naught, not in terms of Newton's and, you know, forces and current, but in terms of how much magnetic field is going to be produced. Then I do the same thing here. I write down, all right, this is a formula that I have memorized and can use. There are other formulas that I could use, but this will work as well as any other formula. So, or you know, if I don't have this handy, I could go back to this. But um, this is simpler. <laughs> and the key here is that to um, have a recognition of the relationship, to algebraic relationship that's expressed in the formula, it's the same algebraic relationship for the unit. So once you start paying attention to this, units will just come automatically. It's not something you have to put in a lot of effort into memorizing. So let me just write that down. So I have one relationship there, magnetic field is mu naught. I'm not even going to write down 2 pi because that has no units, times current over length. So writing down all the units here, uh, the magnetic field, we are measuring it in Tesla. That's the SI unit of magnetic field. So that should be given by, um, or this is actually equal now. That should be given by whatever unit of mu naught is. That's what we are trying to figure out, times unit of current, ampere per, uh, oops, ampere divided by length, meter. So to figure out the unit of permeability or magnetic constant, you just solve for this algebraically. Then you get permeability is equal to Tesla times meter per ampere. So uh, Tesla times meter per ampere. And um, so this unit here could e equivalent to be, uh, equivalently be expressed as Tesla times meter per ampere. And I think Wolfram Alpha is comprehensive enough that when you look up permeability constant, that should be one of the units it gives the quantity in. I mean, you know, this is, um, I guess, the most convenient one, but one of the units. Henry's, uh, I don't like Henry's. All right, uh, okay, so it's not in the list, but this is what I can do. Uh, permeability the first place in Tesla times meter per ampere. And it'll actually, Tesla meter, okay, there it is. <laughs> I had to force it to give it to me, but um, it does <laughs> when I ask it for that unit explicitly. When you give it wrong units, it actually wouldn't uh, give you an answer. If I say Tesla meter squared per ampere, which is not a valid unit for permeability, it doesn't actually do that. You know, it tells me, oh, these are the actual units. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so, good, any questions? <laughs>